The Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. See if your throat and your taste don't make Camel a first with you, too. Find out for yourself. Listen to the great rhythms of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the swingy singing of Connie Haynes. And that little fat boy who, when he heard Frank Sinatra was going to be on our show tonight, said... Uh, hey! Costello, where have you been? And who's that fellow standing behind you? Oh, this guy, he works for me, Abbott. What does he do for you? Well, I broke my suspenders this morning, and he follows me around and holds his hands on my hips. Uh, you, you should be now. ashamed. You should be and ashamed take the of yourself. joke with you. Come here. Come here, Costello. You should be ashamed of yourself. Just look at the condition of your clothes. You know we're having Frank Sinatra on our uh, program tonight. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Now, how can you be so untidy? Oh, huh? I'm untidy? You are. Did you ever get a good look at Sinatra? That guy looks like a stand-in for a dust mop. No, 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 no. We'll have no insults. Sinatra is considered a very handsome man. Handsome? He's so skinny, if they wanted to hang him, they'd have to put the rope under his arms. <laughs> Costello looks hard and everything. Sinatra is very intelligent. He's a college man. He has a sheepskin. Well, why don't you wear a veil and nobody will notice him? Uh, you should be very glad that Sinatra is coming here tonight. We may even persuade him to sing for us. Evan, yeah, if there's going to be any singing here tonight, I will do it. Not Sinatra. But, Costello, how can you compare yourself to Frank? Sinatra has talent. I've got talent. Sinatra appeals to women. I appeal to women. Sinatra makes $30,000 a week. I appeal to women. I, oh. <laughs> hey, Evan. You shouldn't have invited that guy over here. It's dangerous. We're liable to be stampeded by a mob of dames. Costello, Sinatra's fans are not dangerous. Oh, no? When his last picture played in North Hollywood, six ushers got the purple heart. Oh, <laughs> Talk to him, Costello. Will you please? Just talk, sense is all I ask of you. Listen, there's been crazy people hanging around the studio all day. One dame came in, and she had... What did she have? I can't read right. Let's see. Oh, yeah! One dame came in with a pot of geranium. Well, what's crazy about that? They were growing out of her head. Costello, <laughs> I believe you're jealous of Sinatra's person's magnetism. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Abby. You are. I, I didn't know Sinatra had magnetism. That's terrible. Why? My grandmother has magnetism in her right leg. No, 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 you dummy. Your grandmother doesn't have magnetism. She has rheumatism. She gets stiff in the joints. Shame on you, Abbott. My grandmother never took a drink in her life. <laughs> I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Which one of you is Sinatra? Uh, Abbott, I'll bet this girl was sent here by Tommy Dorsey. Just a minute, Junior. You are addressing the president of the Pitkin Avenue branch of the Sam Sinatra fan club. Uh, madam, madam, please. The name is Frank Sinatra. Not in Brooklyn, it ain't. <laughs> Do you know that in my branch of the Sam Sinatra fan club, we got over 400 members, not including the groups? The, who, who are the groups? That's the men's auxiliary. <laughs> How dare you talk that way about Sinatra? Oh, his voice really sends the girl. <laughs> That's nothing, kid. My voice not only sends them, but it wraps them up, crates them, and delivers them right to the door. <laughs> now, you see that, Costello? Women are crazy about Frank Sinatra. I can't understand it. When he was born, the stork delivered him to the YMCA. And what for? So they could build him up a little before showing him to his folks. Oh! <laughs> How often I've stood up to this microphone and said to you, compare camels with other cigarettes, folks. Compare their mildness, their full, rich flavor. Lots of you during this shortage have had to make comparisons whether you wanted to or not. And now I hear smokers saying, boy, I never knew how good those camels were. How mild, what flavor. Now I really appreciate them. Well, keep on asking for them, folks, every time you buy cigarettes. Because when you do get camels, they're still camels. Properly aged tobaccos blended the true camel way. We made more cigarettes in 1944 than ever in our history, and production schedules provide for more in 1945. And that, still without using green, insufficiently cured tobaccos. War or peace. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camels are still camels. <laughs> Now, 
Camel presents lovely Connie Haynes. My heart sings. All of a sudden, my heart sings. When I remember little things. The way you dance and hold me tight. The way you kiss and say goodnight The crazy things we say and do Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Well, that ends that week. Oh, come on, please. You've got, you've got to stop making that racket, Costello. I have told you, you're not a singer. Oh, I said so. I used to sing in a quartet with ten other guys. Ten other guys? Yeah. There are only four people in a quartet. No wonder we sounded so loud. Uh, Costello, <laughs> look, you have no business singing on the same program with Sinatra. He has a trained voice. He has technique. He has color. He sings in Technicolor? No, no, no. No, but he knows the finer points, such as uh, breathing. I know breathing, too. I've been breathing for years. It's a habit I picked up when I was a kid. Besides, what makes you think so sure that Sinatra is breathing? I... Hey, Costello, listen. There, there's somebody at the door. I wonder who it is. It ain't Sinatra. He can't knock that hard. <laughs> uh, come in. Good evening, gentlemen. I have a special microphone for Mr. Sinatra. What's the matter with the microphone we got here? It's too wide. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this? Come here, big boy. Uh, I see you want Mr. Sinatra to be seen, eh? That guy could hide behind a wire. I wonder what Sinatra does with his red points. Everybody is allowed a little meat. <laughs> well, here's a special microphone, and be careful of it. Now, wait a minute, mister. I'd like to ask you a question. Well, what when, is it? When Sinatra sings, does he stand up? Of course. Alone? Yes, indeed. I'll be sure not to break the handles off his microphone. <laughs> Bye. Uh, 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 well, uh, uh, good evening, uh, sir. I'm Mr. Sinatra's nurse. <laughs> you... Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. You, mean, you mean to say he's still got a nurse? Uh, Costello, there's nothing unusual about that. Ah, uh, boy, didn't you ever have a nurse, young man? Yeah, but I let her go when I was six weeks old. And if she looked like you, I wouldn't have waited that long. Nah, <laughs> look, don't mind, Costello. What can we do for you, miss? Well, you see, we always examine everybody who comes in contact with Mrs. Sinatra. Now, this little fat man here looks like he might provide a very good home for germs. <laughs> Keep my relatives out of this. Open your mouth, please. Say, ah. 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 Open your mouth, ah. Ah. 
<laughs> All right, open wider. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, wider. Wipe your feet off before you come in. <laughs> now, Mr. Costello, has anybody taken your pulse lately? No, I got it right here with me. Uh-oh! Oh! Uh, wait, 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 wait. What's the matter? I think I left it in my other suit. Costello, pull out your wrist and let the nurse feel your pulse. Well, I just met the women. We, we, we hardly know each other. Oh, no, don't be silly now. Go ahead. What have you got to lose? Uh, give her your wrist. All right, there. You got it. My, this is... Rain. <laughs> What's the matter? This is the first pulse I ever saw with short ears and a long tail. <laughs> You're looking at my Mickey Mouse wristwatch. <laughs> Look, kid, does your face hurt you? No. It's killing me. <laughs> Telegram, Robert Costello. Telegram. What a what a busy joint this is. I'll take the color telegram. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Interesting, huh? Oh. Well, do tell, do tell. Oh. Well, all right. Uh, well, what does it say? I don't know. I can't read. Oh, give me, <laughs> give me that telegram. Let's see. It says, uh, "Dear Abbott and Costello, the Hasbrook Heights Sinatra fans will all be listening to your show tonight." Signed, Roberta Stockings. <laughs> Roberta Stockings. Mm-hmm. That must be a high hat for Bobby Socks. Bobby Socks. Whoa! Say, Abbott, where is Hasbrook Heights? Boy, well, it's in New Jersey, and it's Frank Sinatra's hometown. What? He's from New Jersey? My home state? Well, that's right. Now, aren't you ashamed of yourself? All those nasty things you said about Frank? I'm in a terrible fix, Abbott. Yeah, you should be. Oh, whatever you do, don't tell anybody what I said because it's liable to get to Harry James, and Harry James is liable to tell it to Benny Goodman, and Benny Goodman is liable to tell it to Spike Jones, and Spike Jones is liable to tell it to Margaret O'Brien, and then she won't play jacks with me anymore just when I'm up to my fourzies. <laughs> I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Frank Sinatra is here. Okay, just slip him under the door. <laughs> Frank, we want to welcome you to our program. Well, thanks, boys. Yeah, Frankie. I was just telling Abbott what a nice guy you are. Yeah, I heard you. So you're up to your fawsies, huh? Well, any more cracks like that, and you'll be up to your nexy and mudsy. <laughs> oh, he was on. <laughs> He was only kidding, Frank. Costello loves you. Uh, he's from New Jersey, too, you know. Yes, sir. I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. Say, Frank, how far is that from Hasbro Heights? To you, it would be about a 20-minute ride in a patrol wagon. <laughs> you know, for a thin guy, he's getting some pretty fat jokes. <laughs> With your shape, I wouldn't talk, kid. Well, I may be a little bulgy. <laughs> but remember... Even an army travels on a stomach. Uh, if you get any bigger, an army will be able to camp on yours. <laughs> Abbott, New Jersey or no New Jersey, this guy is asking for it. <laughs> Costello, cut it out. Cut it out. And he's just my size. Never mind that. Twice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look, you and, Frank, you and Frank should get along fine. You're both from New Jersey, and you should have a lot of friends in common. He's probably got a lot of common friends. Never mind that. <laughs> sure, Costello. You must remember a lot of the boys back home. Did you know Nat Hickey? Nat Hickey? Sure. He sat in the back of me in the second grade. He was a little short kid with a mustache. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you know, many's the time I played hooky with hickey to play hockey. And now you're getting hokey. <laughs> Tell me Frank Sinatra was coming here. Well, hello, Connie. Gee, I haven't seen you all since we worked together with Darcy's band. Well, I didn't know that you two knew each other. Of course. Frank and I are old friends. I knew him before he put on all that weight. I... <laughs> Watch those cracks, Connie, or you'll be up to your next year and mudgy. <laughs> Gee, Connie, it's sure good to see you. Say, if you're not doing anything after the show... How's about taking a little walk with me, hmm? Mm, I'd love to. Hey, say, that's a swell idea. The three of us can take a walk and we can talk about New Jersey. Well, uh, I'd plan to take Connie for a little drive up to Beverly Hills. Oh, good, good. That would be cozy. Just the three of us. <laughs> then I thought we'd stroll through the park for a while. How romantic. Just the three of us. Then I'm taking Connie to Ciro's for a 20-buck dinner. Well, you finally got rid of me. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you all want to hear Frankie Sinatra sing, so I've asked him to sing for our camel audience a very pretty song, If You Are But A Dream. If you are but a dream I hope I never waken It's more than I could bear To find that I'm forsaken If you're a fantasy Then I'm content to be And pray my dream comes true I long to kiss you But I would not dare I'm so afraid That you may vanish in the air So dark If our romance should break up I hope I never wake up If you are born fighting men. Guns and planes, rockets and beefsteak, mortars and apricots, tanks and cigarettes. Camels, camels, millions, billions of camels. And the service comes first. So sometimes your dealer has to say, sorry, no camels today. But when you do get camels, they're still camels. Still cool and mild. Still rich and full of that famous flavor of costlier, properly aged tobaccos, blended in the time-honored camel way. War or peace, camel is still camel. Be sure to ask for them every time you buy cigarettes. C-A-M-E-L-S Camels, first in the service, the rest to you. Oh, that was a swell song you sang, Frankie. Next to Lana Turner, you're my favorite singer. Silly, Lana Turner can't sing. She don't have to. (laughs) But I did. I like that dream number you did. You know, Frankie... That brought back memories of the past. Remnants of my school days. Costello, you mean reminiscences of your school days. Remnants are rags. Did you ever see my school clothes? (laughs) I mean remnants. The last time I was in Hasbro Kites, uh, Lou, I stopped around to see my old schoolhouse. Just an ivy-covered old building. Gee, but it looked beautiful to me. Good. Glad to hear you say that. Because when I went back to Patterson, I visited my old schoolhouse too, Frankie. Mm -hmm. A little red building nestled in the woods. What a dump. (laughs) I'm only kidding, Patterson. (laughs) Sometimes I wish we could turn back the clock and be kids all over again. Well, now, wait a minute. We can arrange that for you. Freddie Rich, a little school day music, please. Hey, break it up, kids. Break it up. 
Hey, 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 break it up, kids. Here comes the teacher. Oh, just when the dice are hot. <laughs> Good morning, children. Good, Good morning, morning Mr. Mr. Meyer. Meyer. <laughs> well, uh, we'll now call the rolls. Uh, Chauncey Abbott? Present. Oh, Chauncey. No wonder he changed his name to Bud. Uh, Connie Hayes? Present. Uh, Frank Sinatra? Frank Sinatra, are you here? Sunday, Monday, and always. And now the girls will return to their own seats. Wait till they sit down. Oh, ho! Wait till they sit down. I put tax on her seats. No, Costello, you may go to the blackboard and write, I am a dope, a hundred times. I gotta go to the blackboard and write, you are a dope, a hundred times? Not you are a dope, I am a dope. That's what I've been saying all along. Hey, teacher, how do you spell dope? Frank Sinatra. Spell dope. D-O-A-P, dope. <laughs> wrong. R-O-N-G, wrong. <laughs> Gee, it's a good thing I can sing, hey. <laughs> Lou Costello, go back to your seat and get out your homework. Okay. Hey, Abbott, I got a very tough question here in my homework. Who invented the steam engine? No. What invented the steam engine? What? That's correct. What's correct? Certainly. Look, all I said was who invented the steam engine. And I'm telling you who didn't invent the steam engine. I don't want to know who didn't invent it. I want to know who did. What? Here we go again. Look, I asked you who invented the steam engine, right? No, right invented the airplane. What invented the steam engine? What's on second? Evan Costello, what are you two boys doing? We're breaking in a new routine. Well, break it up. Frank Sinatra, name all the presidents of the United States. Uh, but I don't know them all. When I was your age, I could name them all. When you were my age, there were only three of them. <laughs> there were four, so there. <laughs> now, we'll try arithmetic. Connie Haynes, do you have your arithmetic problem ready? Yes, teacher. Well, read it. A buys a barrel of apples from B for two dollars. He sells them to C for four dollars. C sells them to D for eight dollars. Boy, is H gonna get stuck. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. And just for that, Frank Sinatra will stay after school. For what? For me. <laughs> well, I won't do it. Then I insist on speaking to your father. Go ahead. He's sitting in the last row. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, can I ask a question? Go ahead, Costello. You know, I've been reading this book. And it says that the bees take the pollen from one flower and bring it to another flower. And then they take the pollen from another flower and bring it to another flower. And then after a while, there's lots of flowers. Yes? Well, what I want to know is, where's Gypsy Rosalie playing tonight? <laughs> Lou Costello, you're a disgrace to the entire school. No, he ain't, teacher. We kids are proud of Lou Costello. And we have selected him as the boy in our class with the forehead most likely to recede. <laughs> Frank Sinatra, I predict that both you and your friend Lou Costello will eventually wind up in the gutter. School's dismissed. Boy, Lou, you know those school days were mighty happy days. You know something, Frank? I like you. You're a nice guy. And I hope you're not jealous. Why would I be jealous of you? Well, on account of I'm a singer, too. Well, I'm glad to hear it. There's always room for one more singer on the radio. Frank, I want you to do me a favor. My mother is listening in tonight, and I know she wants to hear me sing, and also my Uncle Artie Stebbins is listening. And... <laughs> now, if you would sing a song with me, that would be a feather in my cap. Okay, take this piece of music, and I'll make you an Indian chief. Now, I'll start the song, and you join in when uh, I come to your part. Just you give see... me one of the sheets, and we're both licked. <laughs> I have your part marked in red. A little man walked up and down, found an eating place in town. He looked the menu through and through to see what 15 cents could do. One meatball! One meatball! He could afford but one meatball! He told the waiter near at hand the simple dinner he had planned. The folks were startled, one and all, to hear that waiter loudly call one meatball. 
one. Meatball! <laughs> hey, this gent wants one. Meat monster for meatball! One. Oh, meatball! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> One meatball You get, get no bread With one my place again. meatball Evan <laughs> Costello with their guest We'll be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Marine Corps Private First Class Carl C. Smith of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He has just been awarded the Bronze Star for heroic achievement on Saipan. Accompanied by a small group of men, he worked his way through heavy enemy machine gun fire to remove mines holding up the tanks and infantry behind him. In your honor, Private Smith, the makers of camels are sending to our fighters overseas... 400,000 Camel Cigarettes. Each of the three Camel Radio shows honors the Yank of the Week by sending free 400,000 Camel Cigarettes overseas. A total of more than a million camels sent free each week. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week. Are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are fighting. And in cooperation with the Good Neighbor Policy, also to Central and South America. Listen tomorrow to Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore. Monday, the Bob Hawk in Thanks to the Yanks. And next Thursday, to Abbott and Costello. And now here are Bud Abbott, Lou Costello, and Frank Sinatra with the final word. Well, Frank, thanks for coming over. It's been a lot of fun. It really has, Bud, and I'm very glad to have met you. How about me, Frankie? Up until tonight, you and me were strangers. Uh huh. Let's keep it that way, shall we? <laughs> I love that boy. There you are. Look, Look it's, it's our, our old teacher. teacher. Miss Picklemeyer in a shaped pickle. <laughs> no, I just couldn't resist coming over. Remember, 20 years ago, I predicted you boys would wind up in the gutter? Yes. Well, I was right. <laughs> Good night, Frank. Good, Good night, night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, mother. See you soon, Mom. Folks, be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, camels are worth asking for every time. See for yourself how camels' mildness, coolness, and flavor click with you. Mm-hmm.